This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to this edition of Pensacola State Today. I'm your host, Drexel Gilbert. So glad that you're with us today. On today's program, we are going to take a look back to a couple of episodes on previous shows. First, we are going to take a look at PSE's Culinary Arts Program. And then we are going to investigate TRIO. It's an important network of programs at PSC that helps students from sixth grade to adulthood. What's your favorite restaurant in the area? Your favorite item on the menu? You know, all of those good dishes are cooked by great chefs who have to learn their trade somewhere. Well, at Pensacola State College, there's an awesome culinary arts program that's going on and training students in all types of cuisine. And here to talk with us about that today are three gentlemen who have intimate knowledge of this program. And we'll start with uh, Roy Bracken, who is the department head. And then we move on to Chef David Langham, who is the instructor. And also we have a student with us today, Derek Beal. And thank you gentlemen so much for joining us today. Roy, let's start with you and let's talk about the culinary arts program at Pensacola State College. What makes it special? What makes it better than other programs, maybe at other schools? And why should a student want to be engaged with this program? It's a very special program. We have a lot of great regional cooks here in this area. The South, especially New Orleans, is really well known for their cooks. Most of us in this area grew up in our kitchens. We learn how to cook not in microwaves, but we learn to cook by scratch because most of us come from basically uh, uh, nuclear families, as we would call them. A lot of people love to eat. Uh, you can look at me and tell me I like to eat a lot. <laughs> Don't but, we all? I uh, know, but there's a, Pensacola in particular has grown so much for the, uh, a, a, a new taste. They want things besides the regular steak and potato menu and Pensacola State offers a full, full program in culinary arts comparable to the Johnson and Wales programs and the American, uh, the Culinary Institute of America in New York. Uh, I work with people from those programs in one of my uh, uh, areas of skills USA that I work with and so I collaborate with them a lot. We have the advantage of having a $32,000 a year program for $3,000. So there's a distinct cost factor. Plus we have people who teach that are very well qualified from all over the world with many, many years of experience okay. that we have here. So. And segueing to that would of course be to Chef David Langham. Make sure that I have your name correctly that there. Correct. Uh, you are just awesome. I have heard fabulous things about <laughs> what you do you. in the classroom with your students. Talk to me about what students in this program can expect to do see and learn when they are involved in these classes. Okay, when they begin the the program, they start with two basic classes. It's uh, culinary techniques and professional baking. They lead on, that leads on, that's the basic knife skills and things like that, the basic cooking methods and baking methods. That, that follows on to uh, intermediate, which is the, where we serve, serve the public, that is, uh, American cuisines, uh, classical cuisines, and international cuisines. And then that leads further into a uh, advanced course, which is the Garmage. Okay. So these students are actually getting their hands in the food and in the dishes and in the yes, oil yes. and all of those fun things that we, we who are not in the kitchen, associate it's, with cooking. Yes, it's very, it's very hands-on lab base instruction and uh, we try to keep it, our class size very small to have that teacher uh, teacher student interaction between Super. us. Yes. And Derek Beal is a student in this program and I wanted to ask you number one why did you choose this field? Number two why this particular program at Pensacola State College? And number three what's your favorite part? <laughs> <laughs> well I chose this field I've always had an interest in cooking. So growing up, looking at what I wanted to do with my life and as a career, I always wanted to choose something that I would have an interest in. And so for culinary, that was just the obvious choice for me. Um, I was looking around and Pensacola State had a very economical program. They have an outstanding reputation. So for me to look at them and know that I can do what I want to do was just, it wasn't even a question for me, it was perfect. 
Okay, so you're in the classroom and you're you're learning all of the uh, the techniques and the skills to be a great chef. What's your favorite part? My favorite part is just being able to do everything that we can normally wouldn't be able to do at other places. We have some amazing equipment. We've got amazing instructors. So for us to be able to get our hands on and do the applications that we normally would not learn is just outstanding. Okay. So much fun. All right. Well, Chef Langham, let's talk about the different um, areas. Not only do the students learn how to prepare the food, they actually serve it. And this is a, pl a way where members of the community can actually see and taste what the students are learning in the classrooms. Talk to me about the lunch and dinner series. That is correct. Uh, Amer American regional cuisine is offered on Tuesday nights. International regional cuisines is uh, offered on Wednesday lunchtime. And classical cuisines is offered on Thursday night. And so what happens here is that you go to the website, Pensacola State College, and you enter yourself in a, um, a you, you sign up and you get these tickets assigned to you, and then you go and you participate in the dinner or the lunch as a member of the community. Yeah, it's more or less like a, a random lottery process. Right. You can get a, you can get a ticket for each one, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, once a semester. We do have only have the dinners on spring and fall semester, but they can go online to culinary tickets at pensacolastate.edu and sign up like that. And it's all different kinds of cuisine. I'm from around the world. I was looking at your, your calendar of, of events, food from Africa, uh, food from, I don't know, Indonesia, places that you might not necessarily always have access to. Right, we actually had African cuisine today. On, for our lunch on Wednesday. Okay, awesome. So let's talk, Roy, about what's in the future for this program. Well, in the future, the people in Pensacola are asking a lot. Can, we want more. We only offer three meals a day. Most restaurants have five to seven days a week. So right now, as far as degrees go, we are looking at expanding into a bachelor's degree in restaurant management. Most of our restaurants around here like to have people with a bachelor's degree, and we that's a natural progress for us. Also for baking and pastry management. That's a growing field. Also, with our program, we have such a demand for people to come. We're expanding into another category on Fridays, Saturday nights, and Sunday afternoons. We're going with our Broadway a la carte dinner theater series. Really? I have a, bra a uh, background in theater. Actually, I started teaching in the theater department here first at Pensacola State, and it's a natural progress for us working with our performing arts department and the school so we can get more people in. So it's just another aspect. That's wonderful. So I'm going to put you guys on the spot before we go. We've talked about what your favorite part of the program is, but I want to know what's your favorite dish to prepare. We'll start with you, Derek. Okay. That is really a hard question. I like anything that is the high energy, high environment. Um, the flambéing is a lot of fun. That's where you can really get to interact with whoever you're doing it for. That would normally be a table side. So to do the fire the, and present it right there at the table, that's probably my favorite. All right, and Chef Langham, how about you? Can I'd, you pick just one? I'd have to go to <laughs> uh, the desserts, Charlotte Russe, the classical desserts, Charlotte Russe, mousses, uh, things like that. Okay. Those are the... Sounds like fun, and you know, if you ever need a taster, I'm available. <laughs> I'll Absolutely. give you my number. <laughs> Thank you Gentlemen, so thank you so much for thank coming out for and talking us. about the Culinary Arts Program at Pensacola State College. And when we come back, why TRIO is an important word at PSC. Now we are going to tackle the topic of TRIO. It is an important network of programs that help students from sixth grade all the way to adulthood, students who need help getting on and staying on the college track. Joining us in the studios now, Dr. Ed Meadows, president of Pensacola State College. And Dr. Meadows is here to set the stage for us for the conversation that will follow with the directors of each of the five aspects of the TRIO program. Um, so Dr. Meadows, give us an overview of this of TRIO and why it's beneficial to the students at Pensacola State College. These are grant programs that are funded through the United States Department of Education. Uh, they've been around for years and years and years. Uh, originally there were three programs, now there are five. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's really um, a support um, of um, 
students that are uh, in college. It is a support uh, and information uh, program with the Upper Bound program for students in middle school and their parents to understand what it takes to be on a college track to get into college. Uh, and uh, it's often geared to first-generation college students whose parents uh, never had the opportunity to, to attend a college, mm -hmm. uh, or it's geared to uh, students that are in specific target populations that are, are um, uh, economically disadvantaged. Uh, the veterans programs, the latest two that have come up, uh, our upper band, we, we have the only um, two veterans trio programs in the state, as a matter of fact. Um, and uh, we've had the um, Veterans Upper Bound program uh, for a number of years. Mm -hmm. uh, and it actually prepares veterans that are leaving service to prepare them to get ready for college. Uh, and the directors will talk more about those services. But the newest program, we don't have our director hired yet. We were just awarded this program this year. Uh, by the U.S. Department of Education, so uh, Dr. Duma will be talking about uh, the purpose of that program. But it is very similar to our regular student support services uh, grant uh, in that uh, it provides uh, services to students that have been admitted to college. Of which there are actually five programs, and we are going to start uh, now on this segment talking with Linda Shepard, who is a director, director of the Educational Talent Search, and Dr. Rebecca Causey, who is a director of the Educational Opportunity Center, and these all fall under the TRIO umbrella. Um, Linda, let's start with you, okay, because you, um, your part of TRIO focuses on students well before they ever get to Pensacola State College. Absolutely. Tell me about that. Well, it is known through research that children who are introduced into the concept of college preparation or any type of post-secondary uh, training or education function much better and are more successful the earlier we catch them. So we start in sixth grade. We start with middle school students and a specialist visits uh, her group of students at the schools, uh, and we start talking to students about what their dreams are, what their th thoughts are in terms of, of college and or some type of training. And what we do is prepare them so that they're successful in the transition as well as successful students because the goal is not just to get them into college or some type of post-secondary training, but to actually have them complete whatever program that they begin. Now the students with whom you are having these conversations from grade six through 12, are these students that normally might not end up in a college environment at somewhere down the line if, if this, this type of program didn't exist for them? Absolutely. This community has a tremendous need for TRIO programs. Um, the program focuses, the, the target population is first generation, meaning uh, neither parent has earned a college degree and um, low income. Um, so that group of, of population, typically parents are not accustomed to the various resources that are out there to help their children. So many people feel like, well, we can't afford to send our child to college. So what we do is we, we uh, educate them in terms of the resources available. Mm -hmm. um, we help them with the entire process from uh, beginning the planning, uh, the admissions process, financial aid. Uh, we uh, uh, inform them about scholarships. So once they graduate from high school, they know where they're going to college, whether it's PSC or University of Central Florida or Florida a and or wherever, out of state, in state, and they have the resources, the financial resources to be able to pay for their college experience. Okay, now let's talk to Dr. Rebecca Causey because there are students, even though this great effort from 6th to 12th grade is made, there are students who maybe don't get connected or, or that fall through the cracks or, or for whatever reason don't get the, the benefit of the educational talent search. And that's where you come into play with the Educational Opportunity Center. Tell me how that works that's and correct. for whom it works. That's correct. Um, 
We do go into the schools, as Linda does and, and her uh, specialists do, uh, to talk with those individuals who are not enrolled in her program so that we can educate them also and tell them that there is a lifeline after they get their high school diploma uh, so that we can assist them with all the processes of getting enrolled into college. We do focus on the adult. Uh, we primarily focus on the high school seniors and older. For many people in this situation, uh, it's it's not just the desire, they may have the desire to go to college, but they fear they can't even afford to come and ask for help to try to get to college. That's not a barrier here. That's correct. Um, money is always an issue, uh, just about for anything. And a lot of people do believe that they don't have the funds, they don't know where to get the funds to be able to enroll in college. And as part of our process of orienting uh, the individuals as to what help is out there for them, we do talk with them about the financial aid process, uh, the Pell Grant, and other scholarships that might help them build that base in order to afford to go to college. So for the person who's sitting there watching this program and saying, yes, that's me, I want to do mm -hmm. this, how do they connect with you? We operate by appointment. Uh, we're easy to find. Our phone number, if I could give that to Please. you now, is 484-1961. I have offices throughout Escambia and Santa Rosa counties. And so they can contact that general number and we'll get them in touch with whichever office is most convenient to them. We have a simple and quick intake system because we have to have, there are certain qualifying um, requirements that we have to meet in order to fulfill the grant process. So we'll ask a few simple questions. We'll indicate to them what kinds of documentation they need to bring. And I have uh, individual specialists that will sit with them one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. and help them through the process. Okay, now I loved what Linda Shepard said earlier about when you go in with the students, you know, you ask them, what are your dreams? You know, what do you want your life to be? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking now with you, there may be adults out there that that maybe think the dream is passing by, or maybe they feel that um, they're a little nervous about coming and, mm -hmm. and asking these questions. I'm, I'm gathering they're going to find a welcoming atmosphere there. Yes, they are. The specialists are extremely uh, passionate about what they do, and that one-on-one -on -one experience just helps to break the barrier of the anxiety. Uh, we see people coming in in tears sometimes because they, they want to change their lives. They want more out of life and they want to have a better income base. And so they come in anxious, mm -hmm. sometimes in tears, and within that 60 minute process, they walk away with hugs and smiles on their faces. And it nice. gives us a good feeling. Great. All right, Linda, we're about out of time here for our segment, but I did want to give you the opportunity to let folks know how to get in touch with you if there's somebody that, that feels like they need to. Absolutely. Uh, we take applications. Um, they can call 484 1620. We're located here on the Pensacola campus in the Student Affairs Building. Um, and all they need to do is to give us a call. We'll take some information and be happy to send an application out. Okay. Thank you. Thank both of you for being here. And when we come back, we're going to hear from a former student who was impacted by the TRIO program. Welcome back to Pensacola State Today. As we continue to explore the TRIO programs and how they benefit the student population at Pensacola State College. A few moments ago, we talked about the Educational Talent Search, which is targeted to students grades 6 through 12 and getting them ready for their college journey. And also the Educational Opportunity Center, which targets high school seniors and adults who may have missed out on that initial college journey, but who are wanting to continue their education now. We segue now to Rachel Burns, who is the Director of Student St SSS, Student Support Services, correct? correct. Yeah. Okay. And also Corona Davis, who is a former SSS student, but is currently still a student at Pensacola State College. And we'll talk about her college career in a few moments. But Rachel, um, talk with us a little bit about what um, Student Support Services does. What's the value and the benefit that this particular TRIO program has to the student population at PSC? Okay. Um, well, basically, it's a student success program. So the goal of our program is to help students stay in school, 
graduate and transfer, if transfer is their goal. Mm -hmm. And one of the main things that we provide is uh, our own tutoring lab. It's not a tutoring lab that any other PSC student can access. It's just for our student support services students. And we also have our own counselors or advisors, and they work with students on everything from not just their academic advising, but also their um, career counseling, financial aid counseling, transfer counseling. We're kind of a one-stop shop for our students. So we provide um, lots of services, wraparound services that help students stay in school. Uh, and kind of those are the official services and what's sort of in between the lines that's not really written is uh, we tell students all the time, we're your family on campus we're the place that you need to come to first if you have any issues, and we're the place that you need to be when you are, are ch having challenges or facing issues that you need to, to get some help with in school. And why is this important? First generation students um, and students who are low income face barriers and obstacles that other students don't face. Um, they've not had anyone in their family who was successful in graduating from college previously. They don't have a role model to follow. Uh, they don't have someone who blazed a trail for them. They are the trailblazers for their family. And so they need that additional support. They've not seen anyone else go through this experience. So they need people around them to encourage them and cheer them on and to let them know they can do it because college is like a foreign world to them. It's an experience they've never had before and they're not prepared for it. All right, well, let's talk to Corona Davis. And Corona, you are a former SSS student. You graduated with your associates in a degree at Pensacola State College and now are pursuing your Bachelor's of Applied Science. So talk to me about what the SSS portion of TRIO meant to you as a student at Pensacola State College. Well, what SSS meant to me was it was a very good, like um, Ms. Rachel um, said earlier, it was a one-stop shop because mm -hmm. I knew nothing about college. I knew, I didn't know where to go to get resources. And I, um, my husband stumbled into the office one day and he found out the resources that they had for students that were coming back to school. So when I was younger, I didn't have someone to say, hey, you need to go to college, you need to do this. So I knew nothing. I didn't know where to go fill out financial aid. I didn't know what to put on my paperwork. I didn't know about math tutoring. I didn't know about anything but the um, support that they gave me there helped me to graduate with my AS degree there. I went in um, to speak with Mr. James. He was my counselor, Mr. James Blackwell. And he helped me with all the resources. Everyone in there is so helpful. Like, if you don't know where to go for to get your student ID, they can tell you that. They can tell you about other campuses that they've been to and traveled to to give you paperwork to let you know, well, you can go here, we can transfer you from Pensacola State College to UWF if you want to go there, mm -hmm. to whatever college it is you would like to attend, they can help you with that. They also helped out, they had a book loan program that some of the times I didn't um, have my books, I couldn't afford them, they would loan them out to me, that would help me with my classes so I would be stressed less right. <laughs> according to my classes, but Everyone there is so helpful and the lab is, is also great. The lab is open every day. What would you say then, I, mean, I, I hear you talking, but I want to boil it down. Mm -hmm. Without this program, you think you'd be where you are right now? No. Yeah, where would you be? At home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would have not graduated. Okay. Um, what would you say to students? Well, first of all, let me ask you this. How long were you out of school before you went back? I graduated in 1990 from high school from high school and I came to college 2015. Okay, so you were out for a while. So it can be intimidating to yes. go back to college yes. when you've been out for a period of time. Yes. What do you say to students or to, to adults who are sitting home watching this program perhaps or know someone who's in that situation that says, I, I can't do that? I would say you can do it. There are resources out here to help you. Um, if you get stuck in a, in a place, come to Building 6, Student Support Services can help you. They can tell you which way to go from here. You will not be, lo you will not be lost. Right. You can do it. What through do you the think tutoring you're... lab, through the people in the office, you can do it. Oh. Well, <laughs> obviously, Rachel, this program has meant so much to Corona. And um, I just saw it all over her face when she first walked in the studio, and now it's becoming even more evident. And thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, I, I gather that you hear this a lot. Yes, um, pretty much every day. Um, so many of our students would not be able to stay in school uh, without student support services. Um, it's a lifeline 
for mm -hmm. them. It gives them the ability to persevere and provides them with the resources that they lack outside of, uh, of this, this program. And it doesn't cost them anything to do it, this. Everything is free. Um, not just the advising and the tutoring, but we do so much more. We take our students on trips to visit four-year colleges for those that want to transfer. Mm -hmm. That's all free. We even provide money for lunch. We provide um, the, all the transportation. We take them on cultural events. We try to broaden their horizons. We take them to plays and museums, um, places like Bellingroth Gardens, right. really opening up their eyes to, to more in the world that they haven't been able to see because of the background that they've come from. Okay, so we're just about out of time, but would you describe this as life-changing? Yes. It is. It has been a. <laughs> it has played a big part in my life. Well, I can't tell you what an honor it was for me to meet you today and to be able to talk with you and for sharing your story. And thank you for the good work that you do, Rachel. Thank you. And uh, Trio continues to do work across the board. And when we come back, we're going to find out how that the Trio programs also benefit veterans. Stay with us. Welcome back to Pensacola State Today, where we are talking about the TRIO programs at the Pensacola State College campuses. And joining us now to talk about how TRIO impacts veterans, the veteran population of students and veteran population in our community, are Rob Gregg, who is the director of Veterans Upward Bound, and Debbie Duma, who is the dean of Institutional Effectiveness and Grants. Um, veterans Upward Bound actually is targeted to help veterans become students. They are not actually on campus whenever you begin your conversations with them. Is this correct? Well, actually, you're right. Um, we like to think of it as a boot camp for college, for vets, um, to, to help them understand the, that this is to prepare them for the, an academic education. So what does this boot camp do for these veterans? Uh, prepare academic. Uh, some, often vets come out of uh, the military and, and they take care of family and have to live their lives. Well, they put college on the back burner and they get rusty when they um, decide to come back. And, and we're there to knock off the dust, so to speak, and prepare them for um, success. Okay. All right, Debbie, let's talk to you about um, a new aspect to the TRIO program, Veteran Support Services. Do I have that right? Student Support Services. Student, okay. Yep. Talk to me about what this is going to do. Well, once Rob's program in Veterans Upper Bound has helped them prepare to become students and they're actually registered in enrollment in classes at the college, Veteran Student Support Services then picks up the, um, still the camaraderie, they still be, will be with veterans, but they'll be able to get the other support that's needed, maybe some additional tutoring, um, um, help with the academic development. We want them to complete once they do get started. So there's opportunities to attend cultural events, um, all kinds of advising and counseling, um, personal, academic, financial, a lot like our, our um, current student support services, mm -hmm. but really the, the services are geared for the veterans population and to give them the, the like population yeah. that they can um, that really understand what they've gone through. And that will do it for this edition of Pensacola State Today. I'm your host, Rexel Gilbert. So glad that you've joined us. We'll see you next time. <music>